Amin. Amin. Luați loc. Casa mea să fie o casă de rugăciune. My house should be a house of prayer. That's what the text says. Alt lucru care, care a fost în casa Domnului, în templu. Another thing that happened in the house of prayer, in the temple, and should happen in our hearts and on our lips, is what the kids did to praise the Lord with a pure heart. Now that we confess our sins to the Lord and we enjoy the blessings that God gives us, let's come and praise Him. Să pentru... Aduc-i un motiv de rugăciune. Father and daughter trecut o când trecut și am mers foarte bine. Father and daughter camp passed last week and it went really well. We had fellowship and we were able to do it together and this is um, a blessing. This is not the only thing and I am sure that all of us have many things to thank God for and let's stand and let's praise the Lord for all of these blessings. Dear Jesus, we praise you that you are a great God and you have showed us your faithfulness towards us. Lord, I thank you so much for this moment. I thank you for this opportunity to come before you. I thank you for the fact that you forgive our sins constantly, Lord, and I thank you for that. I pray that um, we would forever have your praises on our lips. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that was. Please help everybody that is sick, and please help the fight between Ukraine and Afghanistan and please make the peace with those two guys and please help Ukraine and thank you for everything you've done to me in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dear Jesus, I thank you for another night we come in your house. I thank you that you are good and I thank you that you listen to our prayers and that you forgive our sins. Amen. Holy Father, I want to thank you for this day, Lord. I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here and worship you, Lord. I want to also thank you for giving us the opportunity to um, speak our will, Lord. Amen. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this day and I thank you that you are with us every day and I thank you for everything you give me. I thank you that you protect me every day. I pray this in Jesus' name. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you bring us. Please help Afghanistan and Ukraine. Please help upon Russia for this day. Please help everybody that is sick in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you and I thank you so much for the wonderful people you've put in my life, in my family, and even in my church family. I pray that you would help me to love them and serve them with sacrificial love. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for your love and grace and for VBS this week, and I also pray for missionaries around the world. Thank you for this day you've given us and this time of worship. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that I can know you and that you gave me forgiveness and salvation and I thank you that you protect me, my family and my church. Amen. Heavenly Father, I worship you with humility and I thank you for the forgiveness that you gave me and I thank you that we can be in your presence. I thank you that you're a holy God. I praise you for everything you are for me. Lord, I thank you for everything that we receive from your hand. I thank you that you protected us and you guide us. I pray for those who are sad from different situations. I pray that you be with them and you give them comfort. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day and I thank you that we can be in your house. I thank you that you are a rock and our um, safe place. I thank you for this week for VBS. I thank you that it was a blessing for all of us. Amen. Lord, I praise you that you made me your child. I praise you that you're such a big God, a wonderful God. I praise you for your word, and I praise you that you know how to work in our lives in such a way that we come closer to you every day. I thank you for your promises and for your mercy with us. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you gave us. Thank you that we could be here today. Uh, thank you that you've given us a lot of blessings and please, and uh, thank you that um, we have eternal life through you in Jesus' and pray. Amen. My soul praises you for all the blessings that you give us every day. 
Mulțumesc pentru răbdare. I thank you for patience de grijă care and for the safety that you show me every single day. I pray that you protect us, continue to protect us and you speak to us tonight too and you help us come closer to you every single day. Amen. I praise you, Heavenly Father, because you created us and you sustain us and because through Jesus Christ you gave us eternal life. Praise be your name, dear Jesus, because you have shown me your love and your blessings. I thank you for the wonders that you have done in my life. I thank you for your grace. I thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for me, and I pray that you give me joy in my heart. I thank you for the wonder that you made in my life. Praise be your name. I pray for this nation that you turn around and you bring their hearts to you. I also pray for the Romanian nation that you help them give up their idols and come to you. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you that we can come and worship you in peace. I pray for those who are not in this freedom. I pray for those that don't have this freedom. I pray that you have mercy on them and you open their ears doors that they may hear your word and that they may worship you in their hearts. I come before you also and I thank you for your safety, for my family, for your salvation, for the Holy Spirit, for the many answered prayers and for your grace every single day. And I thank you that you are so good, and I praise you for everything. Amen. I too thank you, God, for the goodness that you show us every single day. I thank you that you are a good God and a wonderful God. Blessed be your name. Amen. I praise you, dear Lord, for the faithfulness that you've shown me and my family. I pray that you extend this grace upon my children and my grandchildren for your I thank you for the mercy you show me every single day and for the safety you give me. I thank you that you have a wonderful way that you speak to me and for your word. I praise you and I bless you. Amen. I also thank you, dear Lord, for the safety that you have for me shown me and for the sacrifice that you have paid for my sin and for the sin of my house. I thank you that you've taken me out of darkness. It's such a wonderful blessing that we can be your children and I praise you for this. Dear Lord, I thank you for everything you gave us, and I thank you that we could come pray in your house. I thank you that you are good. I pray that you make me brave, that I may spread the gospel. Dear Lord, I thank you for the mercy you had on my soul. I pray that you receive my thankfulness and you give me strength to praise you with the gifts that you've given me in a way that you would like. I pray for my grandchildren, for they have mercy in each one of them and you bring them closer to you. I also pray for the youth of this church that you would guide them so that they may not stray away from your path and that they may know the truth about your word. Dear Lord, Thank you that you gave me strength and for this VBS week. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day that you've given us. I thank you for all the blessings that you give us. I thank you that we can pray and read your word. I praise you, Heavenly Father, from all of my heart that you are the only God that deserves worship. I want to thank you for all the blessings that you've given me, for health, for everything you do in my life and in my family's lives. Praise be your name. Thank you for stating that I got to come to church today. Please be with everybody who doesn't know you. Thank you that we get to read your word freely and learn about you more and more. Amen.
Tată Ceres, mă închin plin de recunoștință înaintea Ta pentru harul mare care mi-l ai făcut. Mai mai mântuit, mi-ai deschis inima să primesc Evanghelia și te-ai îndrășat în casa mea 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 și te-ai îndrășat În textul nostru găsim că Domnul Iisus Hristos spune că templul meu este casă de rugăciune. Găsim pe curățe templul, găsim pe copiii care laudă pe Domnul. Dar de asemenea mai găsim ceva în versetul 14. Niște orbi și șchiofi au venit la el în templu și el i-a vindecat. Au venit oameni la el cu nevoile lui, cu problemele lui și Domnul a adresat problemele oamenilor acestora. În continuare aș dori ca și noi să facem același lucru. Să venim înaintea Domnului cu problemele noastre, cu lucrurile care ne apasă pe suflet. Și împreună cu frații și cu surorile, să înălțăm înaintea Domnului rugăciunile acestea. Nu știu exact dacă sunt motive de rugăciune care doriți să răspundeți, dar dacă sunt, acum ai timp. Pentru Sora Cristina Budugan și sănătatea. Ok, și pentru sora dânsei care are nevoie de un transplant. Robert, fratul, are nevoie și de vindecare să plătească și trupească. Mai sunt și alte... Avem mai mulți pe lista de rugăciune a bisericii. We care unii au nevoie de mântuire, alții au nevoie de, 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 de sănătate. Să venim înaintea Domnului și ne rugăm pentru lucrurile acestea. Let's come before the Lord and pray for these. Lucian, and for Fratele Lucian Han, for health. Let's stand and pray. 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 Let's stand
Vin în special, Doamne, pentru frații și and surorile mele care pray sunt în for those brothers and sisters who are sick. I pray that you touch each one of them. You know their problems. You know what they're sad about. I pray that you look upon them and you give them strength. And you have mercy on them. And I thank you for your faithfulness and your love. And I thank you that you're with us in every second. Te lau și îți mulțumesc, Tată, că ești cu noi și în această seară. Îți mulțumesc că ne iubești, Doamne, și te îngrijești de nevoile noastre, Doamne. Venim înaintea Ta și aducem pe toți cei care n-au putut să vină în seara aceasta în casa Ta, Doamne, cu noștri probleme de lor, te rog să... I know you know their problems and I pray that you give them health and you help them and you open their hearts and I pray that you help us listen to you and especially in the upcoming moments that you help us listen to the word. Dear God, thank you that we could come to church safely today. Thank you that this year we could have VBS and please help us to have a time today at church in Jesus and I pray, Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. I thank you that we were able to go to VBS, and I pray that you work in the hearts of the children who come to VBS, that they may receive you in their hearts. I pray that you'd also be with the sick ones and you give them health, and I thank you for everything. Amen. Dear Jesus, I thank you that we could come into your house tonight. Please help me be grateful for everything you've given me and have a and be cleansed by your blood. I thank you that you've died for my sins. I pray that you give health to Fratele Lucian, that you may help the doctors do the surgery well, and that you'd help us listen to your word. Amen. I thank you every day for your faithfulness, dear Lord, and I thank you that you take care of us in such a wonderful way, and I pray especially tonight for the heart of our brother Robert, I pray that you give him salvation and touch, touch his body as well. I thank you that we can come before you with our prayers, dear Lord. I thank you that I pray that you cleanse our hearts and that we may come before you. And I pray that you give all to Fratele Lucian and to Sora Cristina and you be with the doctors as well. And I thank you that you will work as you know best. I thank you, dear Lord, for tonight that we could come in your house and I thank you that you've given us the grace to come before your word. I pray that you help us apply the word into our lives and live holy lives. I pray for those who are sick that you would touch them and give them health. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you that I could come to church. And thank you that there's VBS this week. And please help uh, Mrs. Christina because she had a surgery. And um, please help me to always do what you want me to do. In your name I pray, amen. amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we are all able to come here tonight and to um, pray together and to um, bring our request before you. I want to thank you also that um, there is VBS this week. I pray, Lord, for all the children that come that they may all accept you in their hearts to those who have not. And I pray, Lord, also for the healing of um, Zora Cristina Buzdukan and Fata Lehan. And I pray, Lord, that you give them strength and healing if it's your will. And I pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that... Um, I'm at church, um, and I have a freedom to go at church. Please, thank you that we're having VBS this week. Please help Miss Chris, Christina and her family to be strong in this hard time, and please help us to have um, a good rest of the day and to learn your word today in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we, I come before you and I thank you that you loved us, that you looked for us and you paid for our sins for each of us. You took our sins upon Jesus Christ. I thank you that you took his holiness and you put it upon us. I come before you and I praise you and I thank you that you listen to our prayers and you listen to the prayers of your children. And we know that your hand works among us. 
And I pray Christina for those who are sick. I pray especially for Christina Bujugan and her sister, for Robert, and for everyone else who is sick. For Fratele Han, I pray that you touch every single one of them, that you give them strength, and you strengthen their souls. And for the ones that need salvation, for the ones in our homes, for Robert, and I pray that you search their hearts and turn them to you. I pray for the word that you will be preached tonight, that you give it strength, that our ears would be open and our hearts clean, that we may receive this word, and I thank you for everything you do in our lives. Amen. Let's now sing the ensemble and let's sing the Lord with our gifts. Pace, bine ați venit în casa Domnului, e locul cel mai bun și cel mai fericit pentru fiecare dintre noi. Sper să îl alegem de fiecare dată când avem posibilitatea. Următoarea întâlnire va next meeting will be Sunday. From 9 a.m. And at the same time, I would like to announce that there's only a week that between us and the 40th church anniversary. First of all, I want to encourage you all to pray for these services and to bless these, for God to bless these services. Friday at 7 will be a night that is dedicated to the youth. Obviously, everyone is invited. Saturday will start from 6 p.m. and it will be a night of testimonies, singing, fellowship, and memories from the beginning of the church. Everyone who wants to participate in this program, please address Brother Michel Laurentiu so that you could be added to the program. Iar programul de duminică va începe la 9 a.m. și vreau să vreau să vreau să vreau să ne ridicăm, să cerem binecuvântare. O să petrecem o minute aici. O să vreau să binecuvintez cuvântul tău din seara aceasta. Dear God, please bless your word from tonight and please open our hearts and our minds that we may receive it. Lord, give us, help us be attentive and receptive to your word and 
Um, soften our hearts so that we can receive your word as you want us to and to apply it to our lives. Thank you that you always listen to us and are with us. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to continue talking about Daniel tonight, and for this we will open our Bibles to chapter 8, and we will read a few verses as an introduction for the next few weeks. But before doing this, I would like us to remember a few general dates about the structure of the book of Daniel. We went through the first part of the book, formed from the first six chapters, and the general idea taken from this is that Daniel exceed, ex excelled in all the functions that he had. His reputation was known well to many, and he was appreciated by many. Of course, this also attracted enemies, but God was the one who protected him, and when he didn't protect him, he saved him. In this way, Daniel rejoiced in God's protection throughout his whole lifetime. At the end of his life, in one of the dialogues he has with, with Gabriel, he receives a vision. There's only a few on the pages of scriptures that are known to us in the way that God characterizes them to us. I'm thinking of Abraham, Job, and Daniel is another one. Once with chapter 7, we enter the second half of the book, which directs our attention to the second vision that Daniel has and the interpretation of it. This vision that Daniel has brings light to the next thing. Maybe you heard once or twice about the dark period. For 400 years, God did not speak. We don't have any books written and no prophecies were written on the pages of scripture during this period. Many deduced that God did not reveal to people. If Malachi and Nehemiah were the latest written of the Old Testament. Personally, I don't embrace this opinion, and one of the most evident arguments is the fact that when Jesus is brought to the temple by his parents to fulfill the what was said, two people are mentioned in the Gospel. In Luke chapter 2, we read, Omul acesta ducea o viață sfântă și era cu frică de Dumnezeu. El aștepta mângâierea lui Israel și acum vă rog să fiți atenți. Duhul Sfânt era peste el. The Holy Spirit was upon him. The Holy Spirit told him that he will not die before he saw the Christ. He came in the temple led by the Spirit. In a few verses lower, there was also a prophet there. She was she served God day and night. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. If we take into consideration the, the age that these people have, we can place them in the first century before Christ. I think that God spoke, and he continued to discover himself to people, especially since these 400 years represented a time of waiting, if you want to call it so. In these 400 years, was they were preparing for the fulfillment of the greatest of the prophecies, coming, the coming of the Messiah, who once... Once he came in the world, he opened the kingdom of God to all those who believe in him. We have at least six authors of the Bible books, seven if we also count Daniel, who are contemporary in a great measure between the 5th century and the end of the 4th century before Christ. These books are full of prophetic and historic information, and whoever wants to understand these better or to, to understand this transition period better, they will find these books very useful. You can start with Ezekiel, Ezekiel and Jeremiah after the um, exile to, of Judah. 
At the end of the 5th century are written the 1st and 2nd Kings books. As a result of the introspection and reflection of the um, Hebrew people, we can look at these books as a book of remembering the past, of the history and the way that God worked in their midst. And these books, 1st and 2nd Kings, are generally attributed to, the, um, to Jeremiah. The second part of the 5th century, that's when we have the book of Daniel written, and Haggai and Zechariah, they are very, very well placed in time. In the second year of Darius, we find this reference in both of these books. But a year earlier, before this second year, Daniel, in chapter 9 of his book, he is searched by the Holy Spirit and most pro probably based on the prophecies of Jeremiah, he makes that prayer of repentance, thanksgiving, and um, supplication. And we might, we're probably going to talk more about this in chapter 9. The fourth century before Christ, when looking at the holy people, they are they are burdened by the efforts of rebuilding the city and the temple. We find these things detailed in the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Approximately a hundred years after the first and second Kings books were written, Ezra writes first and second Chronicles. Just as first and second kings, it is a logical representation of the history of that time, of the kings who were to serve in Jerusalem, and they did not know much about their past. As a prophetic book, only Malachi, the book of Malachi, is part of this. So there are 400 years of so-called darkness, but if we look at the book of Daniel, there will be light about this as well. God did not stop speaking and he did not leave us in darkness. He uses Daniel to discover to us what will happen. Whoever reads carefully the few chapters from Daniel that speak about the events to come will be satisfied. Not only are these discovering to us the social or political nature, but they also talk about the spiritual condition of the people. These last six chapters from Daniel are not only useful for us to understand a time of the past, but they also represent a prefiguration of what is to come in a future that is not that far as we believe based on the current events. Until chapter 7, we discovered a Daniel who was called to give the answers when nobody from the kingdom had a solution. We saw Daniel before Nebuchadnezzar twice. The third time he comes before Belshazzar. From chapter 7, Daniel does not receive from God anything else but the interpretation of the dreams that he doesn't only receive the, the interpretation of others' dreams, but he receives his own dreams and visions. Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Daniel's first vision referred to four kingdoms who were to be raised in the next few centuries. In that moment, the first Babylonian Empire was was coming to an end. As we saw a few weeks before, the first revelation had took place in the first year of Belshazzar. He was the king who saw the hand that um, wrote on the wall. Less than 15 years after this vision would, would come the end of Babylon and the Medo-Persian Empire was to come to power. The two revelations that Daniel receives are one after the other. First is mentioned in chapter 7 and it takes place in the first year of the kingdom of Belshazzar and the second that is mentioned in chapter 8 takes place in the third year. The first is a um, summary. In chapter 8, Daniel describes a second vision that is way more detailed and brings new information about the first. 
about the second and third beast. About Babylon, we are told nothing anymore, but we find it mentioned. We fi find it mentioned again in Revelation. I would like now to read the first eight verses from chapter eight. As I said, just as an introduction for the next few meetings. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, to me, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time. I saw in the vision, and it so happened while I was looking, that I was in Shusan, the citadel, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision that I was by the river Ulai. Then I lifted my eyes and saw there standing beside the river was a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward, so that no animal could withstand him. Nor was there any that could deliver from his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. And I was considering, suddenly, a male goat came from the west, across the surface of the whole earth, without touching the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Then he came to the ram and had two horns, which I had seen standing beside the river, and ran at him with furious power. And I saw him confronting the ram. He was moved with rage against him, attacked the ram, and broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram to withstand him, but he cast down to the ground, cast him down to the ground, and trampled him. And there was no one that could deliver the ram from his hand. Therefore, the male goat grew very great. But when he became strong, the large horn was broken, and the place of the four notable ones came up toward the four winds of heaven. This is a particular aspect. If the first vision of Daniel talks about the global history, the second is about events that will mark the chosen people directly. Two empires that will be used directly by God to bring the fate of these people. The Persian Empire is used directly. It was not an accident, but it was planned and spoken by God uh, almost 150 years before through the prophet Isaiah. And now we assist with this plan becoming real. And we are amazed by the way it is fulfilled to the dot. Este următorul care va avea influență the Gre Greek Empire is the next that will have an influence to on the chosen people in the next few centuries. Through it, God will punish again the people through the ascension of that small horn in the end. The Antichrist will rise and he will be the one who will bring hard times for the people of God. And without us wanting to, we start questioning, why is God working in these ways? He raises an empire so that next to rise another through which he will judge them. We don't have time to talk about suffering and its role particularly at an individual level, but the Bible does not mention any nation that was raised or destroyed um, only through one way. Um, or without reason. I will use a few verses from Psalm 107 to underline the way that God works and the motive as well. Verse 33 from Psalm 107. He turns rivers into wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into bareness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. We have examples that this is true. Many cities that were punished, Sodom, Gomorrah, Tyre. We can continue this list. These are just a few of the most well-known ones. And as a parenthesis, maybe this verse can be heard by those on the West Coast as well. This is what I was thinking of when I was reading it. But also, just as, just the, the reverse is also true. 
And in Psalm 107, we are also told, He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell that they may establish a city for a dwelling place. And so fields and planned vineyards that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them and they multiply great, greatly. He does not let their cattle decrease. The conclusion of the psalmist is whoever is wise should listen to these things and to see God's goodness and blessings. If we place these to the next three visions, the vision of Nebuchadnezzar and the two of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar's dream is nothing in comparison with the details that Daniel had in his visions. If we also talk about the implications that Gabriel speaks to Daniel, um, Nebuchadnezzar's dream becomes a beautiful dream. But I couldn't help but notice the reaction of these people when they have these visions. It's very similar. In chapter 2, verse 1, we read about Nebuchadnezzar that his spirit was troubled and he could not sleep. In chapter 7, Daniel confesses that my thoughts were, but were burdening me. And in chapter 8, I, Daniel, um, felt faint for many days. So what produced this effect? Daniel is overwhelmed by the multitude of the information received. Gabriel describes the course of history in detail, so Daniel had no motive to doubt that whatever he saw and heard would be fulfilled. Before any of these events would come to pass, the, the kings were described who were to shape history. De asemenea, a știut cum vor afecta deciziile pe care le vor lua soarta oamenilor. He knew how the, the people would be affected, and all of these details assured Daniel that would not, without doubt these things will happen as they were announced. Lui Daniel îi se spune să pecetluiască. Daniel is told to write these revelations down on a scroll to roll it up and to put it in a safe place for keeping. It was to be kept for the, ge the future generations, and this because prophecies are, these prophecies are about um, far times. Can you think that we tonight are reading this roll, this scroll? The Antichrist will come at the end of the world before Christ's second coming. And for us, part of it is fulfilled and part we're still waiting for it to be fulfilled. The impact that Daniel, that this had on Daniel was very evident. He was exhausted so much emotionally and mentally that he became physically sick. He suffered for many days. He was very burdened by this world, by destruction, by death. More than this, all of these will be caused by the evil from people's hearts. Hearts filled with pride and um, seeking power and riches and Daniel saw their hearts that were burdened and overcome by sadness and his reaction could not be different than to respond with the same emotions. Before closing, I would like to ask you this question. How should we live when we already know what's going to happen? The Bible tells us that the prophecies that were fulfilled that a sh short time after Jesus came for the first time are only a pale image of what will come in the world before his second coming. I want to cite Peter because all of the, these things will be destroyed. What kind of people should you be? Through holiness, waiting, and seeking and looking forward to Christ's second coming. 
If today we had only Daniel's revelations, we most probably would be overwhelmed. But we are awaiting a new heaven and a new earth where there will be holiness. Despite the fact that around us, the Bible says that sinners will fill the earth, we have to trust in our Lord to seek holiness and righteousness and to put all of our hope in the grace that will be given to us at when Christ comes again. We don't trust on our power, but only in God's power who will protect us and strengthen us until the end. Amen. Brother Daniel, if you want to end. Reading the book of Daniel, we realize how precisely God, God sees the events to come and decides the things to come. Daniel was writing his book maybe 550 before Christ. In the next few centuries, he describes in detail everything that will happen. Now it's to be understood that that the Medo-Persian Empire was already seen to be rising. They defeated the Assyrians and this was already an empire that was um, impressive and strong. Daniel says that this ram had two horns. A kingdom of the Medo-Persian kingdom and a greater horn that were the Persians who became stronger in this um, empire. This could be seen at 550 before Christ because things were starting to move but when the next kingdom is described then they could have no idea from the political realities of that time. Daniel says that there is a ram that is raised from the west. Persia is the westmost, and things are changing, and now there's a ram that comes from the west. And the word for ram is egos in Greek, and it comes from, from the sea, the great sea. What pe what's the nation that lives by that sea? The Greeks. And Daniel identifies the next people who will come to power, and that is the Greek empire. And Alexander destroyed the Persian Empire and created his own. And this horn is broken. And in its place come four horns. And this empire is split in four strong empires. And from one of these horns comes another small horn that does great wonders in the sense that it's very powerful and destructive. Who is this small horn? It has a double meaning. It's an antitype and a type. It's an, the first is Ant Antioch, who goes to war with the people of God. And this represents the time that will come, the one that will come at the end. If you see that Daniel makes a... Um, a difference between what is to come in the next few centuries and then he says but the end will come there is a, a he talks about the history until Christ and then he talks about the time of the end when Jesus talks about the events in Daniel he doesn't say that they were fulfilled he says that they will be fulfilled in the future when he says 
Oh, shaton chai Antiochi Epiphanes or Prigerfa de la Temple. Um even even at, on, in Daniel's time Antioch um stopped the temple. But Jesus says all the things that were described in Daniel did not were not fulfilled in his time but we will be fulfilled at the end time. We see uh, realities here that will take place after Daniel and after the ba Babylonian Empire, realities that are symbolic for those who things that will take place at the end time. And that small horn that is only an, an antitype of the Antichrist will come, which, who will come at the end. What's interesting is that he, God tells us what will happen from before and he tells us that the people will be tried but in the end will be victorious this is a prediction of daniel the people are tried but they will be victorious in the end god writes history twice he is so good for this first he writes it through antitypes through symbols and then he writes it in its real form. And why, why does God do this? Because through these symbols, God announces what will happen, he warns about what will happen, and prepares. The evil he warns, and the chosen he prepares. God is so good. He tells us before everything that will happen and how we could be victorious. And now, there's something else that's interesting here. 2,300 uh, 2, nights and mornings will pass. This is seven years. Seven years is 2,555 days. Job's um, trial is for seven years. God says that the time of trial is limited to seven years. And he also says something else that is, it's also shortened. It's not seven years, but it's less than seven years by half a year. Interesting. God shortens the time and intervenes for his people. And as I said last time as well, these things are about the Jewish people, not about the church. Paul says that to me it was given to s talk about things that were not known in the Old Testament, and this wonder of the church that was kept hidden, now God has revealed. And now we live this um, wonder of the church, and we have nothing to do with the 70th week, with the great with tribulation. The Jewish refuse the kingdom and God will take the church from the earth unexpectedly before he starts his work with the, the Jewish people. We have reasons to rejoice because God announced us what will ha what will happen. He told us that we will not go through this great tribulation that will try all the inhabitants of the earth, but that he prepared for us wonderful things that will bring us joy. Praise be his name for all of the goodness that he shows us who live in the time of grace, the time of the church, the time where God will give grace. After that will come the time of judgment that all those who refuse God's grace will receive. Praise be his name. Amen. Let's stand and thank God for this time spent in his house. Brother Marius Vaduva will lead us in this prayer. Dear God, we come before you, we praise you for your word. Thank you that you are the God who leads the history of the world. Thank you that you've kept us in your plan and nothing that happens happens without your will. And please strengthen our hearts and to trust in your promises. We know that we're in secure hands and nothing and no one can take us out of your hands. Lord, please give us strength to be faithful to you, to stay anchored in you and to walk towards heaven with faith. Lord, help us and please continue to be with us and through everything that comes in our path, help us be victorious in Jesus' name. We trust in you and we praise you forever. Amen. And to the one whose power works through us, the one who can do more than we ask or think, to him be all glory in the church and in Christ 
forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you.